to get started and interrupt and uh, res respectful of your time. I will tell you it is Friday. And we've all been running around like crazy, so my brain might ca take some time to catch up to my mouth. So just be patient. Same please. here. <laughs> yes. Um, but my name is Angelica, and I'm the director for the Center of um, Inclusion, Diversity, Equity, and Social Change, also known as Ideas. What does that even mean? Um, our office, a uh, quick snippet, is our office does some educational workshops, and so doing workshops like these, especially within the section of leading in a diverse world, or our student workers do a lot on racial microaggressions, implicit bias, and intersectionality. We also do amazing programming, um, and so this Friday, actually today, today's Friday, today uh, we're doing a big um, tabling event. Um, a lot of cultural and identity-based organizations are tabling, but we'll also have performances, a DJ, and we'll be raffling off, or we'll trivia raffling off some prizes of Black History Month trivia. Um, and so it's, our first Fridays are meant to bring people together to find their community and or for those of you who want to learn more about others in a different venue. Um, and we just have fun, just to hang out. And so this, this because we know that student organizations are still tra uh, struggling post-COVID, or we're still in COVID, but post shutdown. Um, and so we wanted to have another tabling opportunity for a smaller net for people who are specifically looking for certain experiences. So that's me. I'm Jonathan Chalmers. I'm Career Engagement Specialist for the School of Business. Um, I am really, really excited to be here for this in particular. This has been a fantastic week of career opportunities and cow puns. So if you have been to any of our other sessions, uh, we're so grateful that you turned out. Uh, just had a resume contest wrap up. We had some awesome debates over the winning resume. Uh, I presented earlier this week on beefing up your resume. So happy to contribute to this one. Good afternoon. So appreciate you being here. I'm John Frasia, also career engagement specialist here in the newly named, I'm going to say it with that voice, Center for Career Engagement and Development. That sounds very weird. Close. Close. Oh. Did I say, what did I say? Exploration. Exploration. <laughs> I apparently wanted to be about engagement, but uh, I'm wrong. <laughs> it's really pumped, isn't it, when you get down to it? It's only <laughs> pumped. Thrilled to have you here. I work um, more closely with HSHP and School of Music, Theater, and Dance, but we're here to help everybody there. And I'm glad you're here. Yeah, so for today, we're going to talk about Zelda Heard. Uh, job search strategies. Um, and so it's just really nailing down like how do you align um, aspects of your values and your identity as a respect to looking into your future career. Um, and so for those of you who had this up earlier, if you're here for SLI credit, make sure to scan in and, and sign in so that you can get credit for being here today. So and even, if you're, know, yeah, even if you're not, right. please scan in. We know oh, you're here. Yeah, sorry. we want to track So yeah, you it. should scan in if you have There is uh, later today a barn door prize giveaway. Uh, so <laughs> all of the... How do I scan it? Do you do? Oh, so you go yeah. into the photo, um, like as if you're going to take a picture, no. and then and you put it over the QR code and a link will come up. <laughs> So that we're going to enter all of our attendees into our uh, system and pick a winner. Is the link coming up? Yep. Zoom it just a little. I don't think I've had one. Yeah. Can I, may I hold your phone and get it a little closer? Okay. Yep. The grand prize isn't to book of the best cow jokes. <laughs> Second prize. Yeah. I mean, like, I know I've been attending some of the SLI workshops, but I never I get to officially sign in something saying, oh, yes, I'm now in the SLI, like, practice. Well, yeah, well, some people do SLI transfer writing things. Sometimes it's required for a job. Some majors required to do some of them, some cohort programs, um, and or just for self-learning. So, and there's different tracks that you can do. Those are run through the Office of Student Engagement. Um, so, some what are some seldom heard job search things? So, what do... What do we usually talk about when we talk about job searches? You can feel free to respond. Mm -hmm. Like money and stuff? Money, that is definitely the first one. Looking for a job and make money, yes. Any other things that come to mind when we talk, when we think about what we usually talk, discuss when we're looking at job searching? Yeah. Like platforms, like Handshake, LinkedIn. So like the technology tools yeah. of how to search. Oh, like web location, like where it is. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Like the value set job boards. Yes. Mm -hmm. The the job, maybe the organization. Mm -hmm. 
Anyone else? I thought I saw one other hand. No? So some of the things that we usually talk about, finding money, you need to find a career, and having a plan all in place. Like you, so the minute you get here, you have everything figured out, right? And or as a senior, you already have all your different stages of the next five years filled out, right? Five, 10, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, what we don't talk about is taking into consideration what your actual needs are, right? Sometimes we have a lot of external pressure of like what it should be. However, sometimes we don't stop and think about like, what are our actual needs when it comes to this job search? You know, who is your herd? Who is your community? You know, and how does it influence your decision making? For some of us, our families or our caretakers very much dictate and uh, we have some, like in my situation, I give back to my family. So finding a job that helps me contribute back to my family is absolutely necessary because of where I grew up. Um, for some of us, we have to take that into consideration. Others don't necessarily. And then sometimes your identity, so like your herd collective group or your identity a member of, sometimes you have to take that into consideration when deciding on a particular position or not. So for example, in STEM, you know, women identify in, in underrepresented populations or tend to be underrepresented um, in first gen um, within STEM fields. So like, how can we find the right STEM role that may align or that will help in, uh, those individuals thrive? And then also there's some different factors um, that can come into play when looking at what, what a job search entails. And so overview, we're gonna talk a little bit about meaning and purpose. We're gonna do an activity, um, discuss you know what is an important in a role, what is to consider, and then we'll definitely very top level talk about job needs um, and disclosures. And so meaning making. So I love Robert Nash, and I've learned about Robert Nash to my husband. That was his advisor in his master's program. Um, and his quote is, uh, purpose is an ultimate object or end to be attained. It is a goal. Meaning has to do with how you understand your life on an ongoing basis. Um, does that make sense to any of you? Right, that without purpose, you have no meaning, but without meaning, you have no purpose. So they actually go hand in hand. Um, and he does a lot of research about meaning making, specifically around college students. Um, and in that stage of age group of what it means to find meaning and what it means to find purpose. So if you're a nerd like me and you like to read more, he's a really great person, especially because it's specific to your age group of like how to find more about what these, what these things mean to you. But in general, what is meaning making? It really is about finding what makes our purpose worthwhile um, and that are some of the decisions that we make um, fulfill that. Um, as well as a justifiable depends on what those meanings and what we attach to them, and they also drive our behaviors. So we move away from insisting students to constantly, uh, his, his theory, is to constantly pursue and achieve a whole host of academic and career goals, which is purpose. And without, we sometimes we forget, is to help formulate what those systems of meanings are to inform those goals. Like why are we hitting those goals? Why do we have those in front of us? Why do we want to be in higher education, which I didn't realize that much later? Like, why do we want to be an artist? Those are the, pur and so it's kind of like feeding out, figuring out like, what is the purpose to that? And so meaning is core values, like what we live by, what we love, what we learn, what we work, what we worship. And so we kind of search for a sense of connection, pattern, order, significance. It's a way to understand our experience that makes us a sense of both expected and sometimes can be completely unexpected. And so it kind of fuels our decision making. And so for in this particular time of, of where you're at, is can be academic, it can influence your academic decisions, it can include your involvement, your time management, and financial decisions. Um, and so some academic examples of what courses are you taking? What's your major and minor affiliation? Um, what school do you, are you in? Do you want to transfer within the schools and change your major? Involvement, um, you know, are you going to do research opportunities? Are you looking into professional student organizations, professional conferences? Do you want to do research? Um, or I said that. What kind of um, um, maybe jobs are you looking for as a student that could align with that? Um, who do you want to hang out with? Do you live in a residential living learning community? Like, for, do you want to engage with my center or any other centers within belonging? Um, time management, um, you know, what are some new pressures? Um, you know, fitting in new opportunities. Um, do you want to do study abroad? Um, do, um, again, but research as a class or an independent study. Um, uh, 
And the last thing is financial. Does finances impact how you make some of these decisions, right? For some, they may not have to sit back and make those and think about what does this look like financially. For others, um, they may have to kind of weigh in, like if I want this opportunity, can I afford it? Or are the fees available? You know, so like study abroad, although you can do reciprocal where you pay the same tuition to go abroad. However, all the, the, uh, the steps to get a passport may not be feasible for some or for international students. There might be study abroad opportunities, but those countries may not provide a visa for those students or their visa, like they have to wait a certain amount of time before they can go abroad to come back into the US. So those are all things and financial considerations that some people have to make as they formulate their meaning and purpose. And again, so some identity-based bar barriers and pressures. Um, some of them can be cultural, um, some of them can be family needs. Um, so if you're a caretaker um, or um, uh, have other caretaking needs or younger siblings, families, some people have our multi-generational homes, um, so your socioeconomic status, um, also ability status. So depending on where you go, um, sometimes um, that comes into consideration as their access for accommodations. Um, like I mentioned for international students and then also religious needs like do you have a place to prayer meditate um, are there services in the area that are important to you um, you know are you able to explore your religion outside of your family and so all of these sometimes uh, provide um, barriers and or pressures when we're formulating like what meaning um, um, and purpose means to us and so also it comes down to like what we're talking about today job versus a career and so sometimes you learn in the classroom and you gain skills to prepare you for your future job, but it's also important to make meaningful decisions to help you find a career that you love, right? Uh, when you're living through meaning making, you're actually really caring for your own meaningful career path and you shouldn't have to worry about outside pressures, but not everyone necessarily has that luxury. So when you're really only worried about how it makes you feel and the meaning it gives you, then it can actually be a career versus a job is something you show up to, you get paid, um, it is what it is, it, meet, it, make, it meets a certain reason, but a career is something that you find uh, full purpose in. Um, it's meaningful, it's fulfilling, and so that's kind of like where we try, I try to encourage students to find that career piece versus something that you just show up to and get a paycheck to. And so the next I'll hand it over Thank you. for determining needs and wants. on this for a second. We'll see if this works. So, it wouldn't be a workshop or a fun shop as Jonathan fun likes shop. to call it yeah. without a little activity. So, we know that wants and needs aren't necessarily the same thing, right? Needs tend to be those base level things we have in our lives to survive. When you think of needs, what comes to mind? Shelter. Shelter, right. Day like today. Are we all happy to be here? It's warm, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. We have community, yep. Yeah. What else? Food. I'm sorry? Food. Food, thank you. Yep. Access to medical care and stuff. Absolutely. Yeah, right? Anything else come to mind? Water. Water. Being able to provide for your family. Yes, right, exactly. Now, when you think about once, what do you think of? Luxury cars. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Vacation. Yeah. And these are sometimes things that are still good for us, right? Needs we think of as sort of our, our baseline, but mental breaks, vacations are actually good for us, right? <laughs> what, else, what else comes to mind when you think of that once? I'm sorry, that's no, okay. We'll go here and then there. Material. Yeah. Which some of us have different spectrum of values, right? Yeah. Uh, video games. Video games, right. Yeah. Yeah, that's all. For me, it's music, right? I, I, I'm old school, I collect physical music, right? CDs, interestingly, not vinyl. Well, I respect vinyl. I think one could be, this yeah. could go either into a need or a want depending on the situation, but right. where it is. Say again? Where it is, how close it is to your current location, like mm -hmm. maybe you have to take care of a parent and you mm -hmm. can't live that far away, or maybe it's there's not that limitation for you, or still, I want to live near my family instead of live right. far away. Right, absolutely. Yeah, there's nothing that says it's absolute A or B, right? It's not necessarily binary. There is certainly intersection between them. But we usually, if we have to make a choice, we're more likely to compromise a want and a need, right? Or than a need, rather. Needs often align with our values, right? 
So we're going to do a little exercise with you. And what we're going to do, uh, rather than brainstorm, this is, uh, I've got a cheat sheet. I'm going to give you a sheet here with a whole bunch of values. And on the back, so you can read what they are, and on the back, thank you, I'll keep one for myself, I want you to sort of rank order them if you can. Now, if you can't, because there are a lot of values on here, if you're like, oh, that's like 20 values, try and come up with your top five at the very least. But if you're kind of like, oh yeah, I kind of know where this one fits, and you go deeper in the list, you can certainly do that as well. But we're going to try and get a sense of what drives us. So we'll give you a couple of minutes to do that, and then we're going to get up for a second, and we're going to do a little exploration together. Anyone would like a pen? Like this pen. is sort of the last of our crop of cow pens. This is a crop of cows. I can't. There you go. Of course you will. So the lower the number, the stronger the value is. As you're doing that, think about how they intersect with your career path. Did you want one? Jonathan, do you have more of these? Yes, I set them down to give out pens, but I'll hand them What's that? Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. No one should go hungry. that there are some that shift slightly through the context of just you as a fully complete human being and you as a career professional. And if that's true, you can note that as well. actually slightly different about oh. how we're doing it, so that's why I took it off. <laughs> Career Center, right? This is something to revisit and ruminate on as you move through your, your life experience. You'll probably find that there are themes and threads that continue through, of course. Right? Well, 
since I've done one of these myself. No, I was just going noticed around the room there are three sort of I'll call them stations three stations where there are big pieces of white paper and what we'd like you to do when you're ready is come up to the station and write values that apply so over here no I'm sorry over which one is that one Jonathan absolutes or must have so when you think about your career your meaningful career what are the values that go on the must have, gotta have it, right? That's that one over here. Over here to my stage uh, left, I guess, right? Stage left, I have to think, I always get that like lift, <laughs> is values that you'd really like to have, but you're a little more flexible on, right? So they might start to creep into the want area, but still it'd be great. And then over here at the top we have, well, that would be nice, but if not, Mm, right I can live with it so gotta have it be cool to have it bonus time right cherry on the Sunday so as you've got them feel free to come up we have markers there for you and then we'll see we'll see if we have any themes Thank <laughs> you. 
time to write it, don't you think? Yeah. So, we have our sheets here. Let's see. Absolute must-haves. Here are, well, those would be nice. <laughs> Let's see if we see any themes. So on the absolute must-have, let's see what we have. We have excitement, challenge, family. Uh, I think that says moral fulfillment, something that's very small. My eyes are oh, very yeah, old. Oh, yeah, like moral fulfillment, contribution to society, family uh, life. Leisure, leisure time, time excitement. Yeah. See, creativity, another contribution to society. Advancement, creativity, diversity, choice of environment. Excitement, diversity, compatible co-workers. I can tell you that matters, and I've got to tell you, I am living the life. <laughs> Leadership, diversity, benefits and advancement. Security, compatible co-workers. Excitement, benefits, leisure time. On the job training, moral fulfillment. Compatible, compatible co-workers, contribution to society, creativity, diversity, variety, family life, security, independence. Do you hear any themes? Which isn't to say every single person shares these, but do you see some themes in there? I kind of feel like I do too, right? Um, I see inclusion, right? We want to we want to be in an environment where everyone is welcome, where everyone can contribute, right? We want to enjoy our coworkers. I've been in my career a while, and I can tell you how much that matters. Right? We don't have to hang out 24 7, 
but it's nice to know we can sometimes, and it's nice to know in this environment in particular, there's a sense of team and cohesion and, and shared purpose. Well, I mean, during the week, we spend more time with each other than we do at home. Absolutely. So it is important that we have to have some kind of control. Yep. And I'll tell you, when it comes together, it's magic, right? Yeah. Let's see what would be nice, preferable. Good. These are pretty important, but maybe not quite as important. On-the-job training, contribution to society, advancement challenge, choice of environments, easy commute. I like that when you live in Ithaca. Um, On-the-job training, challenge, reward, high earnings, benefits, leadership, benefits, challenge, flexible hours, advancement, benefits, challenge, benefits, high earning, prestige, high earnings, rewards, benefits. Any themes there? Benefits. Yeah, benefits, rewards. What's interesting to me, and I think there's research that bears this out, very few people put salary or benefits in the gotta have. We wanna be treated equitably, we want our talents to be well rewarded, and I think that's fine. Most of us seem to be focusing on meaning first, and if the meaning's there, Please pay me fairly for my work. But very few of us are like, well, I'll take any kind of environment as long as you pay me a ridiculous sum of money. It's interesting. Let's see what would be nice. Easy commute. Yeah, better if we don't have to drive through reams of snow, but if everything else works, might deal with that. Flexible hours, uh, prestige and status, power and influence. Prestige, prestige, and slurring, that's not good. Prestige and status, flexible hours, on the job training, easy commute. So, what I take from that is for the right job, the right feeling, the right meaning, maybe I'll drive a little longer, maybe I'll take the train, maybe I'll swim, no, just kidding, right? So much of life is about feel, don't you think? Yeah. So, how much do you think your values influence? Am I going into your your section? No, okay, just checking myself there. How much do you think values influence your needs based on this data that we have? Yeah. I think quite a bit, and also like yeah. I think also like on the flip side, needs often form our values. Like for me, for ah. example. I, I'll say mine personally, I'm type 1 diabetic, so I put benefits in like, oh, I must have it because yeah. like, for me, like, that's a need to keep me alive. Right. So that changes my value, and I think it's vice versa. Mm -hmm. And then I hope that other people in my community can have that too, like, benefit and feel safe. Mm -hmm. like, I, I think I personally would value more diversity because it would mean I'd be sort of more okay in that place, not because I'm sort of a minority of any kind. Mm -hmm. I have autism and ADHD, and if it's like, well, those things don't even exist, or you can just get over that and not have them, then I don't think that would be a good environment where it's like, well, just don't have a disability. Right, yeah. It, identity matters. Our, our situations matter, absolutely. I feel like something I found also when I was thinking, I was thinking about like um, values, but in the sense of what I've been uh, learning from my community. Mm -hmm. For example, um, my mom has always been a very hard worker, mm -hmm. and I feel like that definitely reflected on my my degree and for example for me it's a must have on the job training because she herself has told me like you always have to be learning and always have to be like developing your skills so like i see that in my environment and that's mm -hmm. become a need for me because okay. it's something that i'm so interested in mm -hmm. yeah sometimes our values are role models for us mm -hmm. right our families shape us our cohorts shape us coming to college and having different educational experiences and Viewpoint shapes us. And so I wouldn't say that our values are necessarily fixed in stone. Many of them will continue as themes throughout our lives, sure. But as active, growing, hopefully engaged human beings, we're experiencing our world, we're growing and we're learning. The things that engaged me at 18 aren't necessarily all of the same things that engaged me at 58. And yet there are some core threads that come through, right? That, that matters. We kind of already hit that. <laughs> How likely, and I'm curious, let's use the absolute must-haves, because we didn't use sticky notes, we thought we might. 
How likely, raise your hand if you think you'd be really, really likely to compromise something that you put on the absolute must have. See, that's one. Maybe two. like temporarily just for a temporary job. Okay. Yeah. Good. Good point. Yes. I feel like maybe I would, but I find myself like, I would thinking like, oh, maybe for now, you know, or like, mm -hmm. oh, maybe it's not that important as I'm thinking it yet. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, like it goes a month or two go by and then you realize like, no, I gotta move on and do this. Mm -hmm. Has anybody, the excellent points, right? We sometimes may temporarily push them aside, right? Because we think, oh, I should do this thing. Have you ever had the experience, I have certainly, where I've done something and I'm not sure. I call it my gut feeling, right? Oh, I have a bad gut about this, but I'm like, oh, I'm gonna do it. And then I get to it three months in and it doesn't fit. A lot of times our values come back to us and they say, think about me, how's it working? I'm going to pass it on now back to my colleague. So as you're thinking, and as I'm passing the um, baton, the clicker, as you're thinking about where is my life taking me, not just my career, my life and my career, and where might I want to work? This and any that you might have added that weren't on here are worth using as benchmarks. Does that make sense to you? Okay. And then, then I will sit down. <laughs> and then one another thing is like the next step is to determine how can you tell if an employer or an organization is actually for you um, and I mean we could do a whole other session about really diving so deep good. of looking at different aspects of like how the job description is written of you know how does the organization present itself online what are you can chat with people who work there which um, LinkedIn is a really great place to go see like um, you can go look at a company that's on LinkedIn and see if there's IC alum there that you can reach out to and ask them like How was your experience or maybe you realize you know someone that works there that was from your class? Um, or before you you can ask anyone in this office who have worked here for a while like they may know actually an alum Like for I don't know if some of you went to the session yesterday Like there was a lot there based off relationships that we all have made with students and they come back So we can try to uh, connect you with someone who may work because sometimes something's presented online but you don't know unless you talk to someone if it actually resonates or it's actually realistic of how they present themselves. Um, so things to consider is what we've talked about today, your values, but like when you go into a role, like what is important to you? You know, your first role that you have in as an internship and your first role that you have when you graduate from here isn't gonna be your forever role because you'll hopefully grow and develop um, as time goes. But when you step into your first role, what does that look like? Why is it, what is important to be in that position? You know, and again, what you talked about today is well, does it align with your values in some way or fashion? Um, the location, many people have mentioned, and it was on some of this too, is the location important? You know, like for me, I'm from Texas and I moved across the nation. I was only supposed to come here for a couple of years, but that did not happen. Um, and now it's been, this summer's 12 years that I've been living in New York. Um, you know, and so I'm almost getting to a point where I've almost lived consecutively in my house longer than I lived in even in my mom's house right now. Right, and so um, if you go somewhere, like yeah, maybe it's temporary, but is it somewhere that if, if something, if opportunities arise, are you okay with staying there, right? And that's what happened to me, an opportunity arose and arose and arose, and then I was even thinking of leaving Ithaca, and then Ithaca College snatched me from across the hill, and now I'm still in Ithaca, right? And so you never know, like maybe is it a somewhere I can stay there for a while or not. Um, again, the type of position, so like sometimes, um, and it happens a lot, uh, and statistically in research, um, women identifying as well as marginalized individuals um, sometimes compromise the type of position because um, and everyone deals with imposter syndrome but historically data wise those are the populations that question themselves the most like am I really like the right person for this position when you look at a job description sometimes they're looking at 60% of what's in the job description because they're willing to help teach you the other 40% and so you don't have to check off every single thing that's on there, but do you have the majority of what they're asking for, at least for the requirements um, of like, this is the must haves for them, then you can help uh, use transferable skills to get the other 40%, right? And so some, don't um, go for a lower position just because you don't think that you're ready for the next position. You might very well be set up to be in 
you know, the next to an entry level or a mid-level for some of you who might have worked through all of undergrad outside of a student position. Does the organization culture values represent accurately? Companies, especially um, post-George Floyd era, like have DEI statements, they have DEI positions, which is diversity, equity, inclusion, or directly, sometimes they use belonging or just inclusion and equity. Like they use a lot of those terms, but how are they living that out as an organization? What does their board of trustees look like? What does their C-suite, like their CEOs look like? Do they, are they all mostly white men? So how can they have DEI statements if the leadership doesn't match what they're putting in their statement, right? Um, the other values, do they have employee resource groups? Those are um, identity-based resource groups um, that um, help find communities. So like sometimes there's women groups, there's LGBTQ, um, Sometimes there's veteran groups, uh, women of color, men of color, or even some big organizations will even break out those affinities to Asian, Asian American, Latin, Latin American, uh, Latino or Hispanic, Black, African American, international. Like they'll, they'll go, depending how big the, the organization is, they'll break them out even more. Um, do they have those? And so if they don't, then how are they valuing inclusion if they don't even create spaces for you to find people that look like you or do programming? that might align with your values. Um, laws, sometimes laws are important, especially for people who identify as LGBTQ, um, um, depending on your marriage status, uh, religion. Um, also, I, I have a privilege that I don't have to worry about it, but for hair, like the Crown Act. So for people who have different textured hair, or have, um, some states and cities have passed laws that you can't discriminate based off how someone wears their hair to work. For some people that's important, right, for me, I have a privilege that I don't have to worry about that, but there's other individuals that do. And so are laws impacting where you're trying to apply to, like parts of your identity? Um, and then benefits, you mentioned earlier, like sometimes benefits are important. I'm at a stage in my life that I want tax-free dependent care so I can pay for childcare. Um, and then also I wanna have an insurance where if I need to, my, my husband can join me. Um, also, I have health stuff, so I also want a health savings account where I can do pre-tax which these are probably going over your head, but these are like pre-tax options where I can put health money away so I can pay for my prescriptions every month and go to the doctor and I'll be like, do I have, do I have money to go to this copay? Or I can just go because I pre-saved already, right? And some of those are above your head, but they're real things to think about for some people earlier on, or as you're asking questions of like, salary looks great, but then what does my future look like, right? Retirement, are they putting money into your retirement? Do they have retirement options, stock options? which some, you're like, I'm young, but actually in, when you first start your job, if you don't, if, depending if you have loans or not, those are actually the prime time to start putting tons of money in before you have other obligations. Um, if you don't have loans to pay off, right? But some of us do, like myself. Um, and so I had to pay those off first before I could start um, really saving for retirement. So one of the other seldom heard job search strategies, I think, sorry, that comes up, is what if I have a disability, right? And I think that's something that we um, don't always think about in the job search process, how to talk about that, what even are those rights and protections that you'd have. So um, again, kind of uh, thinking about what that looks like, whether it's a mobility impairment, whether you're deaf or hard of hearing, blind or visually impaired. Does anybody know what the sunflower signifies? Close. That would be um, what we would call a hidden or an invisible disability, mm -hmm. something that you wouldn't know necessarily necessarily by looking at someone or someone might not assume. So uh, just real quick answering some of these questions in the time we have remaining. What are those rights and protections? When and how do I disclose my disability during the application hiring or onboarding process? And how do I request a reasonable accommodation for an employer. This might not apply to everybody here, might not apply to everybody today, right? but things happen, right? So, That's uh, exactly right. <laughs> sorry to gesture. <laughs> no, no, no. Poor John is dealing with a knee issue, but uh, you have a hang tag in your car. So you know, that, that really matters. Yeah. So um, you're not, I don't expect anyone to absorb all of this. The point is that there are multiple laws, both at the federal and state level, mm -hmm. that protect you, whether it's the Americans with Disabilities Act as part of federal law, whether it's New York State human rights law, other states have uh, similar laws that provide protections for individuals with disabilities. And this is all specifically 
with regard to employment, protecting you uh, at, as it relates to employment. Um, and then that brings up this question, why disclose? Why talk, share your disability with an employer? Why talk about that? Um, and, and it really comes down to, in order to be protected, in order to have those protections, you have to advocate for your needs in that situation. So in order to benefit, you have to share your disability with your employer, and they're only required to accommodate you if you've shared that in advance. So navigating that can feel tricky sometimes. Um, what I wanna share with you, and maybe somebody could help pass this out while I talk, uh, is this disclosure decision, thanks for y'all, is this di disclosure decision guide. Um, this is just something you can take with you to consider and it'll walk you through that process of determining the need for disclosure. So kind of looking at the employer, um, as Angelica said, looking at their DEI statements, looking at the makeup of uh, you know that workplace and talking about um, sometimes if we go for an interview, we might realize, oh, this workplace is not accessible for you. That's a barrier. Uh, so sometimes that comes up in that process. Deciding when to disclose. Like I said, if you're going for an interview and you know you may need an accommodation as part of that process, sometimes that naturally becomes the time and place to disclose. And then deciding how to disclose. So um, I love this packet. I wish I had more time to walk through it with you, but I, I encourage you to take that with you and explore. Um, something else to kind of keep in mind is, along with disclosure, there are protections, but also responsibilities, and sometimes it's important to understand both. So you're entitled to have your disability treated confidentially, respectfully, seek out information about hiring practice, disclose at any time, Receive reasonable accommodations for an interview. A lot of times you Move.